every single mm-hmm. quarter from 7th grade to 12th grade I had gotten 94 or above and the one quarter that I didn't get it like that was heartbreak but then to be like in your field and to be in a class that you're supposed to be really you know ready for and not doing as well was definitely like a hard hit home rolling 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 what Uh. Was that your Fred Durst impression? That was my... <laughs> <laughs> what, no, my Fred Durst impression is... Um, is uh, That's my Fred Durst impression. I know y'all be loving this right here. L-I-M-P biscuit is right here. I, I can do a pretty good Fred Durst. We, this is the fourth time with Biscuit. I knew you were going to bring it up. It's come up on our podcast. It's, listen, it's been... We only brought Limp Biscuit up a couple times in, in the first four episodes. It's past episode 24. It's, We've had a 20 episode we're at buffer. 26? Oh, we're at episode wow. 26 this time. And I, I, should I be, think we already hit our limit. I, I don't should think be we, allowed. <laughs> there should be a grace period. I should be allowed oh to God. talk about Limp Bizkit we have again to, now. I, I have a whiteboard in my apartment. We should just keep, like, uh, it's, <laughs> it's been like a countdown, like it's been a blank day since Janelle like, brought up Limp Bizkit. <laughs> like the work, <laughs> we're back down to zero, folks. <laughs> like the workplace injury thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly like that. <laughs> uh, back to zero. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a good, we, had a, we had a good thing going, yeah. folks. Speaking of zeros, yeah. uh Welcome to I'm Trying. I'm Janelle <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> That's very good. I'm Jacob Duro, and welcome to episode 26. We're so glad you're here. Uh, I'm, I'm, if you hear any clanking, it's because I'm sipping tea and there's a spoon in the mug. I bought you that mug. You did. It's very cute after you broke one of the other ones. I knew you were going to bring yeah. that up. You couldn't just let me have no, that. I, no, I the, got you something. You replaced it with a much better one. Okay. It was just kind but of a I generic mug. mug. Yeah, yeah, well, it happens. It's okay. I mean, we didn't have a cat yet to break our mug, so mm-hmm. you had to do it for us. And, um... Yeah, no, it's cool because it's a Tetris mug because she knows I like Tetris. And when it gets hot, the bunch of the the bunch of the, the the pieces fill in on the mug and become colored in. And then uh, when it gets cold again, they disappear again. And I, I think it's delightful and wonderful, and it, it says that you know a lot about me. Amazon baby. Amazon baby. I saw at work today. In the bathroom, there was like a mop and a mop cart, one of those yellow like mop carts. Yeah. And it was an Amazon Basics mop cart. And I'm getting a little worried that Amazon Basics are just selling oh, it was, everything. Oh, it was now. branded. It was branded. It was like one of those yellow mop carts that like you carry around the mop in, and yeah. and it was just, had the Amazon Basics logo on it. And I guess there's just Amazon Basics everything now. Yeah. Also, the mop kind of looked like Marge Simpson because the, the 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 mop part. Oh, it was blue. It was blue, and it was yellow. The 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 the, the, the holding part, the rod. Mm. <laughs> I was just. I don't know. It was a mop that looked like Marge Simpson's and an Amazon Basics. Amazon Basics. I feel like that should be my drag name. Amazon Basics? Yeah. (laughs) I'm basic. I love Amazon. Welcome to the stage. (laughs) We had that mug. That's new in mug technology, eh? So it's, you know... It's, why are you laughing? Te- yeah, I'm being technology. A. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> oh, I said technology, eh? Technology. And it, and it didn't blend well. Because no. as a Canadian, we never know when the A is going to flow naturally into something and what is. I feel like I don't notice you do the A thing a lot. Like, I've spent a lot of time around you, and the most cliche Canadian thing is the A thing. And I just don't hear you do it a lot. Yeah, maybe because I'm not asking you questions. Because A only pre- yeah, you never oh, ask me A only anything. follows a question. You never infer about anything in my life. Or uh, or no, I'm I. To, or... <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were being sarcastic. A. Maybe. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, there's mug technology where it's mm-hmm. the whole heat it when it heats mm-hmm. up or cools down and something appears and disappears. Yeah. And my friend was telling me that uh, their friend was thinking of getting their mom or someone mm-hmm. a mug that when it heats up so like they have their coffee they're drinking from it when it heats up it says i love trump that's terrible and i hate <laughs> so it I don't, so that's they a don't terrible, know as a that's prank that's a mean prank my, that's my, i know my sister had one at least in my parents house that was like a, when when you when it got heated up it was like a it was like a starry sky and when mm-hmm. the hot water went in it would show all the constellations oh it was pretty it was cool yeah yeah, yeah. they've been around they've been around a minute i have one that's 
like trees and stuff, but I love trees. Someone put it in the dishwasher and it's it, ruined. Really? Mm-hmm. I put this in the dishwasher. Can't talk to you like though because they might hear through the okay. wall. Well, sorry. Uh, Our studio. <laughs> oh God, we live in one place. Uh, the loft, folks. Mm-hmm. Anyways. On today's episode, we have uh, an old friend of mine. Her name is Ann O'Rourke. She is a singer-songwriter. Uh, I met her in the Long Island open mic music scene years ago, and um, I'm just constantly amazed by her talent. And for the listeners that may not know what Long Island is, I'm only saying that because I didn't know what Long Island was until a year ago. Yeah, Long Island is a... It's not Long Island City. No, Long Island City is a part of Queens. Long Island... Is uh, a, a I don't really know what it's called a, a mass of land past Brooklyn. Pa- yeah, Queens. well, when you it's not New York City, it's its own landmark. I don't really. Is I've it never, near the Hamptons, right? Well, Hamptons are on Long Island. Okay, so Long Island is an island that's long that's attached to the the southeast uh, tip of New York and New York City mm-hmm. that extends all the way out, like in the, all the way out east, and it's you know quite a few miles long and a couple hours drive across and. It's full of suburban towns and and once Billy again, Joel is from yeah, there. Yeah, the further out you go, the the richer the neighborhoods become. <laughs> like like your Hamptons, your Montauk, and stuff like that, lighthouses and junk. And um, yeah, and you know there there's been a scene. Wow, that was awkward. Um, there's there's I don't know there's a, there's a really interesting music scene that I kind of grew up slowly integrating myself into between high school and college and. Um, a lot of songwriters, a lot of punk bands, a lot of angry high school kids, and also like a lot of very sensitive folky types and and some really wonderful songwriters and singers and performers out there. And I've gotten to be around a lot of them, luckily. And um, and it's delightful. Big fan. <laughs> wow, I'm glad you met her. Me too. Me too. We talk in the episode a lot about um, the. This was a. It's one of those things where when you're an artist. And people really like your work, mm-hmm. or they they see you as talented. But getting people to come out, you know, getting people to come to the live <sighs> show, getting people to buy the album, <laughs> getting people to kind of show like, and and also the the kind of strain of feeling like you're bombarding your friends all the time. Yeah, with, I like, feel like marketing. that on a normal day to day basis with everything. It's so, really the worst feeling. It's the worst. Yeah. That's why having a publicist or manager, agent, all that stuff really, really helps. Fans. Fan, fan base, <laughs> too. A fan base helps. Um, yeah. Well, no, I mean, that's the thing. Is like we, I think anyone who makes anything or performs in any way really gets this. Like, yeah. if, even if you just, like, make art. Maybe you do an art show now and then yeah. and you just want people to come see it. Like, Especially it's... when you're past that newbie point. Like, when mm-hmm. you're after... After like a couple months, year in, where all the novelty of the people being like, we need to come see you yeah. do your thing yeah. when that is worn off. Mm-hmm. No, it's true. It's true. I mean, and it's funny. Anne, Anne is tr- has truly one of the prettiest voices I I've heard in that entire scene. Um, and and she's a fantastic songwriter. What does a pretty voice mean? She just has a really pr- like it's this it's strong and it can it can hold a tune first of all, but mm. it's not like it's it's just. I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. It's pretty... Like a fairy-like? She she once... I remember... I don't know if she wants me to say this, but I do remember <laughs> she had an account called Angel Voice Annie for a while. Oh, the voice of an angel. She literally... Yeah. Just, she just has a very, a very Angelic strong, voice. clear, uh, beautiful tone to the way she sings and the way... And she writes... She's just a really good songwriter. She deserves mm-hmm. a lot of credit. And um, she was... We... She, we we're kind of part of this group and still are in some ways. Mm-hmm. Our friends like the Koreans and Deirdre and Nolan. The Koreans? The Koreans. C R E A N S. Oh. Uh, e A N S. Sorry. Okay. Um, like, uh, and, and, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, of, sing- out to a lot the of singers out there, Frankie, and there's a lot of singers out there in that whole region of Long Island that are, are really fantastic uh, and have been you know, running in those circles for so long. And it's, it's hard to be a small fish in a different pond you know you grow in this little place for so long you become kind of a big fish like everyone mm. knows like oh they're probably some of the better performers we have around here and then they go and try to advent, you know, venture elsewhere and, and get bigger and there's, and there's so much bigger fish. And, and like I told her I'll, you'll hear it in the episode like I, I, I kind of think I was making a splash out in Long Island <laughs> and then I got to Brooklyn and every single apartment building has some singer songwriter and a lot of them are great so it's, it's hard mm. to make an impact you know, this isn't funny. This is very sincere. 
Well, if the queer goes sideways, then it may be funny, but right now you're doing pretty good. <laughs> well, I've, so. uh, God, I hope so. Um, but yeah, Anne is, Anne is fantastic, and uh, I'm excited that we, we had her on. This was a, um, a Skype call, one-on-one interview today. She was a little uh, shy about uh, doing an interview, because it's also a joke in the, in the, in the episode. Just you, you, can, you can sing in front of a room of drunk people at a bar, but if you ask that person to maybe just talk a little bit, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean I have to talk? Talk about myself? It's a whole different mode. Yeah. I mean, Especially when you're a musician and not a comedian. Yeah. I was about to say, you don't know anything about this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I guess we'll leave it at that. And I uh, hope you enjoy the episode with the wonderful Anna O'Rourke. Let's start. Let's start at therapy then. Let's start. We'll, we'll, we'll transition from one to the other. So, you've been training to be a music therapist for a long time now. Yeah, um, I I started. It was a, it's a college program. So I yeah. got into Malloy College after I graduated high school, mm-hmm. and um, they kind of ease you into the program. So you start with just learning about music therapy, and then it's the application and the clinical application of music therapy. So mm-hmm. you, you do observations, you do field work where it's a bit more hands-on and then you do mm-hmm. internship. Um, and it's at ease in like, as far as the workload and as far as your involvement with your clients and your responsibility as a student music therapist. And um, I guess just, just for record, I should probably say what music therapy is, not sure. to confuse anybody. I yeah, went on sure. the internet and I looked up a definition that people would understand. So Okay, go for this, it. This is it. Music therapy is the clinical and evidence-based use of music interventions to accomplish individualized goals within a, in, within a therapeutic relationship by a credentialed professional who has completed an approved music therapy program. So that's Thank like... You. On the official, that's me. That's me. I'm the approved, <laughs> You're the professional. I'm the credentialed professional. I passed my my uh, board certification exam last November. So, uh, oh no, two Novembers ago. Wow, I've been doing this for a while now. Yeah. Not a while. It's two years. Maybe that's a while. That, that's a while. You know, that's, um, good, that's, that's a notable chunk of our young lives. Yes. Yes. Um, but definitely the getting there part was harder than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel like that's like heavy. I think I think actually as far as like remembering that fear and failure in that moment, I've almost like blocked it out a bit in my really? mind because it was it was that intense. Um, wow. At least it felt intense in the moment. Just because like you're becoming a therapist, like you have to be emotionally ready to like take on you know working with clients that are going through different things, and so being available, being like your most authentic self, and like. That's like hella scary. Um, <laughs> hella. <laughs> hella. That might I might drop a couple of those. Are you are you a Californian all of a sudden? No, but it's been happening. <laughs> I don't know how or why, but I've been saying hella recently, and I and I don't know if I'm okay with it. It's rolling off the tongue for some reason. <laughs> all um, right. Yeah, so it was just it was a time of like a lot of intense emotional growth. Um, and kind of having to do a lot of growing up in a short period of time to like get to graduation. So mm. that was intense. There was like a lot of failure. I think there was a lot of tears, I think. No, I know. There was definitely a lot of tears. Um, it was a, you think it was because, you know, college is hard or was it a emo- personal emotional thing? What was going on there? Um, cuz college is hard. Like it, it's for anybody. We all get it. In addition to making sure all your papers in and your case studies is completed, it's also like that um moment of like you know are you connecting with your client because during my internship I worked at a um, early intervention um, special needs preschool so in addition to working with a bunch of different kinds of classes with different skills and different needs um, I was also working with an individual and like so my Mm. how I was connecting with her was really relevant to how my case study was going to go so this was all like interconnected with my grades and you know um how how was I as a musician and um I like failed my not failed but I got like a C plus and I never get C pluses and I got a C plus for the first time in college and that was definitely yeah. a, that was like a failure to me as yeah 
high honor roll student all of yeah I was, I was gonna say like for the, have you always been an a student and so getting anything under that was just kind of like a, a, a kind of a hit to the soul yeah um definitely i mean i think like even looking back at high school you had to get like a 94 or, or higher to be a high honor roll student and then like 89 or higher was honor roll and every single mm-hmm. quarter from seventh grade to 12th grade i had gotten 94 or above and the one quarter that I didn't get it like that was heartbreak but then to be like in your field and to be in a class that you're supposed to be really you know ready for and not doing as well was definitely like a hard hit home yeah was it about like your musicianship yeah, clinical improv um we were talking a lot about like modes and um I was kind of like taught through songs when I first started playing guitar me too and um so I, I was still kind of like pretty shaky on theory and that kind of understanding and just my piano skills. I'm not like the craziest. I got tiny hands, so it kind of <laughs> doesn't really. You're a good guitar it's, it's a player. It's a challenge. I, I don't know how I play it. I've been working with bar chords and, and I'm figuring that out. But it was a lot of like like jazz based music or um, like modes music and having to understand the theory of that and needing to improvise and Mm -hmm. and that was all like really daunting to me because i wasn't really like 110 percent sure that i had the musician skills to work on that so sure sure but that's that's hard it's we i think we come from a similar musical like growth background like like we've learned similar ways how to like play guitar and stuff and probably started writing similar I, I still remember you um coming into open mic nights with a book of every song you've ever written the handwritten in this like journal and i'm like oh my i'm like i need to do that like i was just like how how um so i know you know we've both taken this seriously and and it, but it's probably I mean, I mean but me too like i didn't really learn any theory until late into high school and even then, it, I, it's very basic. So the idea of going from like, oh, I'm just a musician who likes doing this and is good at this and is good at connecting people this way to being graded on your technical mastery is it's it's intense. It's a hard shift to make. Yeah, which which you would think if I've been in the program already for like three and a half years that I, I would have made that transition already. Mm-hmm. But I feel like um, it was it was a bigger of a challenge than I had thought. Mm-hmm. And I was, but, and I did a lot of writing in that time too. Like I think that book that you're, you're referring to, <laughs> I think a big chunk of the writing that I was doing was during that time. Cause you know, you're in college, it's new experiences. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of, um, you new things to be writing about new people that you're meeting and, and new chords that I was learning. And I was putting that a lot into my music. And I still like, even when I was learning the new modes and the new things, I was trying to write with it. So maybe I could understand it a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was still, it was a lot. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, I still have those books. To, Great. Um, I filled up one and I started a new one. And <laughs> I've been writing a bit, but I think I've been definitely having some writer's block as of late, but <laughs> we all go through it. I, I get it. I just, I finally just, I performed a new song for the first time in a minute uh, recently that I hadn't written a new thing in like months. It felt like I was at a stand still. It's, it's hard. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to find something new when you've been writing for as long as we have. I mean, I know to maybe any veteran songwriters who've been in the game for decades are like, yeah, okay, really. But you know, we've probably both been writing for like eight, seven, eight years, if not longer. And um, into our teenage years to now. And it's like, you run out of stuff. You, know? you really have to delve into new experiences and musical realms to kind of find a new thing to write about and a new way to or, present Or like it. new chords or new progressions or yeah. somehow, or new voicings. You're not like sounding the same yeah. every time. Oh, I worry about that constantly. Yeah. No, I think that's what's happening now is like I'm getting – super like aware because I've gotten a lot of compliments on my older stuff with like how the voicings um are you know they were commend they were they were they were complimenting me on it and then mm-hmm. I was like well now I gotta write a new song I gotta make sure the voicings are just as nice as those cool. you know like, yeah ah. it's hard it's hard I, I I I get worried I mean I I've I you know everyone knows one of my favorite bands are the Mountain Goats and the Mountain Goats are not known for having complicated 
chord progressions. Like a lot of their songs are the same four chords, and they're aware of that, and they're fine with that, and they don't care. John's like, these are effective for this story, and obviously it's a different story, and it's being presented differently, and like, so what? You know what I mean? And so I, I try to, whenever I get down on myself too much about that, I think of that. I'm like, you know what? It's okay if I do another DAG thing here, because you know what? It works for this song, and it's going to be different than the other ones, and people are going to respond to it, and that's okay. Like, it's, it doesn't need to be... I don't have to start coming up with every crazy diminished seventh that there isn't, you know, exactly. thing. <laughs> sometimes, on occasion, I've used it. It's just not, you know, not every time. Um, yes, tell me about the EP. So I remember you released an EP. I think I still have the business card uh, and everything. And uh, uh, so, yeah, tell me about the process of making that and releasing that and how that's been. Um, okay, so I started recording with two friends out in uh, Huntington, New York. Um, Kirsten Maxwell and Carly Redini, and they had heard a couple of my songs. They were like, hey, we really want to work with you. Um, have you thought about wanting to record an EP? And so around like this time last year, I was sitting in Carly's basement, and we recorded six songs. I, I have to I brought you with me. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, I realize this is a podcast, so they're not going to Audio see it, medium. But, but you will see it. <laughs> I see and it. I can show good. you the cover. Um, and I know what the picture's of, even. Yeah. Oh, it's it's of it's of my backyard. Yes. Which I'm looking at the path to go down to the beach, sitting here. Um, but that is that is that. Uh, yeah. So I started recording with them, and we did like all the vocals, which is a really cool experience because I think it was definitely um, a step that I was ready, like super ready to take. I haven't. I mean, I've I've you saw the books. I've written dozens upon dozens of songs, and nothing had like been professionally recorded before. So I was super excited to start that process of having professional recordings and we decided to go with like the acoustic route so everything was just pretty much stripped down acoustic so it was just me the guitar and yeah. um harmonies which i was really excited about mm -hmm. and so we recorded four of my songs two of them were from like really really early on um like 2014 um the right. uh, two more were probably a bit more recent um like 2016 2017 and then two i actually just had written that year so it was a nice combination of older stuff that I had, but also newer stuff. And so it was really cool working with them. Like, um, I don't know if you know Kirsten Maxwell at all. I don't think we, I do. We, uh, she's a big, like, Huntington area person. She now lives in Nashville. But we have oh. similar, like, uh, like, vocal background. So we were both, like, in choirs growing up and, and having that sort of, like, professional um, uh uh, like training as far as like you know what kind of vowels you used and what kind of enunciation and diction you had and then kind of like having somebody who understood that and then helping me reframe it to be more of like a indie folk singer sure, and sure. polish my voice that way was really fun and really mm -hmm. new and different and they also got to look at my music in a way that I really hadn't looked at it before like we were rewriting bits of melody and mm -hmm. and so it was really cool to be a part of that process I remember I I heard um uh, we had just put together this like vocal breakdown in the middle of the muse, Ooh. which is a piece on the album, and um, it was like four part harmonies in the middle. And I remember hearing it back for the first time, and I actually started to like tear up a bit. <laughs> this is so cool! Like, I'm really excited about um, having something like that to listen to and show my friends and everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that that was whole that was a whole summer, and then I did the whole like putting it online and and distributing it and putting it on social media and um yeah so and then and then the then the really daunting part happens where you put it out online and then everybody starts listening to it and then you have to you know then you get start getting your responses from people um mm. so and then it's all about like you know how many listens you got or how many people bought CDs or how many yeah like people liked your post about the song that you like message you know made a post about on mm -hmm. Instagram and then it's all about that kind of stuff and and that's I have it, it becomes like you have to like market yourself at that point like you have a yeah. product that you have to market like at you being a musician and you having an EP out like have you felt like that where you're yeah not just well, a creator but a like a mm. product like a business yeah it's yeah. going be my, my EP that i have out at this point super, super outdated, outdated and, and, and i need to put, put a better one out, out. <laughs> um, <laughs> um like there's maybe two tracks on that thing that i'm okay let's like it's rough um 
Uh, and when I put that out, it was more just like, here, I have this. It w- I didn't do it, and like, I didn't immediately send it to every label. I didn't immediately... I, was, I didn't make... So I don't, I don't feel like I made a huge splash about it. I feel like I just did it because I could, and I had a friend who would help me with it, you know? But but now, like, uh, today I started... I was sending out things to labels. I was... I'm, I'm trying to book things with, with bigger venues in New York City because I live here, you know? And and, and like, that's that part's... Um, I, get, I, get, I get what you're saying. Like, I hate... Um, okay, so, like, I did this tour in June, right, where I got to, like, go all over the country, and I, I played at a bunch of cool venues, and small places, and slightly bigger places, and friends, and, uh, and just random people coming out to listen, it was awesome, but it did kind of feel like, for a month, I was just yelling at my friends to, like, come, like, support me in this endeavor. You feel like you're bombarding them with everything, (laughs) and I don't like that feeling, like, when I have to make four or five different posts about a gig that maybe two people will show up to, but it's, like... Ah, please help me. <laughs> and you know, and you know, it's not because they don't care. You know, like, no, but like, not at all. It just, it's, 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 you know, you can't be there constantly. Like, it's, 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 it's one of those things that it's, it's just part of, of, of the biz. You know, yeah. we get, the only way we're ever going to get better is if we um, push ourselves and, and perform more and more. But, but then it's also, uh, I don't know. I feel like a whiny musician when I say this. No, no, no. no. Uh, but like you know. When in person, everybody tells you like, "Oh, no, like that was really awesome," or like you have a live show and, and everybody really enjoys what you have, and then it doesn't like that's not reflected on your like streams on your music platforms or doesn't translate. Doesn't translate, and yeah. that I feel like can be really, like super frustrating and feel like a failure in ways because like you're you're putting it all out there and then like kind of where it counts, not not really where it counts, but in this day and age where that popularity kind of matters it's not there Mm. have you have you gotten a message or something have you has anyone ever like told you like hey i think you were better live or something like that no i don't think so i mean i i I do think that over the last year um post creating the ep and working with with my friends i've definitely grown as a musician and as a performer and as a singer and i'm sure that probably the work that i did a year ago just as anybody else doesn't necessarily reflect exactly what I'm doing now, which is okay. Um, but like the, um, but like you post a video on Facebook or YouTube and then you get like two likes on it and then you'll do that same song at an open mic and you get a very different response. That kind of thing. Yeah. Again, whiny musician right now. Um, no, I understand. No, it's not whiny. I'm, I, that's why that I'm also a whiny musician. I have all the same problems you have. I get it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what did I read? I read something on your notes that I wanted to go back to. Uh, you submitted to a folk festival and you didn't get it? Uh, yes. So this this year has been a year of now I have something like a physical thing I can send you or yeah. like really great audio that I can send you. And I remember the like Kirsten and Carly being super confident. They're like, yeah, no, no, no. Like these songs are amazing. You're going to get in. And then I send them in and it they say, you know, like thank you for – for submitting, but you know, this year um, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to say no. So that's always that's always tough to hear. Which festival? Um, even like the the Falcon Ridge folk okay. uh, folk festival. Um, I think I sent one to Connecticut. Like just local, not local, yeah, but like yeah, yeah. stuff that's a little bit outside of my fish pool. But um, and I know you were talking about like what will and not even just like the failure of not getting that. Mm-hmm. Um, that folk festival, but then, like, what kind of gives you comfort in that sense? Yeah, yeah, well, at the end of every episode, I always ask uh, our guests what's one thing that brings them comfort or that helps them feel better after some sort of letdown or desperation or, or, or failure. Ah, oh, okay. It's the I, final I question. Been, I had a, oh, it's the final question. It's the final question. If you want to make it, if you want to do it now, though, we can. Well, I, I, I kind of did a little, like, that kind of like what gives you comfort about a couple of those topics that I sent you in the notes. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So like, yeah. I, I will say you're the first. You're the first guest to send me like a full on like notepad. It's just like here's oh, everything. Because I don't like I don't like talking, so I had to give <laughs> myself <a> bullet points. <laughs> what do you mean you don't like talking? I don't like like when I get up in front of people and I have to like talk. Like public speaking is my worst nightmare, and I I can make funny faces in front of children so hold on, all day hold long. On. Hold on, you're saying you're <laughs> saying that I, I've seen you walk in onto a, like a, a stage in a loud, crowded bar 
like a bunch of people just like drinking alone or with so or with dates or something. I've seen you go up and very easily get their attention because you got the voice of an angel. But see that and, all the singing and the music does that for me. But okay. the actual thing that I'm saying in between is like, why is she still talking? Oh my gosh. <laughs> No, I, I and I, I say I've been saying this a lot recently, which probably means I should just get over it. But like, um, I, I, I like I, I work with kids, so I get to I can make funny faces in front of them all day long. Like mm-hmm. I'll make stupid faces for them for thirty minutes in their music therapy session, and then when it gets to like talking to their parents, I just like freeze up. Or when I have mm-hmm. to like say something in front of them for like an assembly, like forget it. Or like recently, I I, I had a I had a show and I had to like. I was playing electric for the first time, so I had to tune in between every single song because I was putting the capo. Because my songs are all capoed, um, yeah. and so I had to change the capo every single song, and I had to retune. And so, like, and st- and Crean is standing up at the front, still like singing harmonies with me, and I run back and I'm like trying to tune because like my oh. amp was off to the side, and I'm like, uh. like okay, um, I'm I'm gonna be very quiet now and retune. So thank you for your patience, like. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I'm not good at talking. Hence the reason why I sent you bullet points. Got it. Um, and um, what I was going to say was uh, the um, the thing I was thinking about, like, like doing all of like these, like you were talking about, like sending your stuff to, mm-hmm. to bigger venues and, and, you know, I'm trying to get into folk festivals and mm-hmm. um, it's, it's like, it's not, and, and when you don't get into them, it's not a reflection of like your own talent. It's just it's that realization that you're in a bigger pond, like you're yeah. in a you're in a bigger pool, and it where maybe like in your hometown you might have been one of like the better people in your town, and maybe you made a big pretty big splash there, but now that you're in a bigger place where everybody is is good, like yeah. the the opportunities that you're gonna get are gonna be different, and it's not because you're because you're bad or because you're not as good. It's everybody's good, but just you're a very tiny fish now in a very much bigger pond it's it's hard uh it's hard you got to find a way to stand out it's 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 tough i get i mean i completely understand like uh i i i I, in a thousand different i mean i used to go out and play the mike silver by you guys out and way out in long island and 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 like i feel like i over there like i people started to remember who i was like there was a notable like okay we we know who these people there was like a group of us like like these are these folks know what they're doing and I, I live in Brooklyn now and every, you know, every building has their resident singer songwriter and a lot of them are very, very good. And I, a lot of venues just straight up ignore me when I reach out to them. And it's hard to, you know, I, Hey, like I, I throw everything I can at them, but we all do anything we can to give us a little bit of edge. It's, it's, it's hard. You're not alone. Anne. I know we're all about alone. And even yeah. like you said, like your group of friends, like even yeah. just in your, in like, like I, I've, I've recently, been able to you know you have like your high school friends you have your college yeah. friends and now because I've been out of college I've, I have like my open mic friends mm-hmm. so just even in my open mic friends like I'm gonna do some shout outs here I mean you yeah. got Frankie Matos you got Juliana yeah. Ryan you got all these people that are releasing their own music um uh Ferndale's like um South Santiago like you you got so many great musicians and like we're all in the same long island community just you know trying our best and and it's it's hard it's yeah. it's like we're a dime a dozen at this point <laughs> we're all shiny dimes and we're all and we're all d- differently shaped none of us can go in a normal uh uh uh, uh traffic <laughs> meter traffic Wait, what? i'm trying to make i'm trying to say how like we're all shiny, but in very different ways. And now I'm saying we're differently shaped and not every traffic meter is going to accept us because some of us are ovular and some of us are, are crooked and some of us have a little tooth or something. I don't know. I <laughs> we, We're that, we're like, most of us are, are you know, when you, this is totally, I don't know if this is related, but like, you know, when you go to like the aquarium and you can put in a whole bunch of different coins and you get like that fancy ass coin, we're just a whole oh, the, bunch the of souvenir coins. pennies. The souvenir pennies. We're a whole bunch of yeah, souvenir yeah. pennies. All we the got souvenir our own pennies. designs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, yeah, we do. That's my next album, Souvenir Penny. <laughs> um, <there. laughs> um, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's it's weird. So so now I'll ask you. We're, we're, we've been going for a little while now. So now I'll ask you what that thing is that brings you comfort or or just some hope or just just makes you feel good, even though you might have, be having a rough day. Um, I think one thing I, I I try and remember, at least like 
being a singer songwriter as far as that goes yeah, yeah it's also like i'm choosing to work on my music therapy career right now like i'm a board certified music therapist this that's my job right now so it's not like i'm a working musician and i'm not getting as many gigs like i have a paying job that i can fall back on and i'm yeah. building myself as a professional so this music thing that i get to do is is mostly i mean it's for me it's it's for fun and so as long as i'm having fun then that's then not then i'm okay you know like mm -hmm. um if if the pressure was on and like i needed x amount of gigs by the end of the day and and you know so many songs you need so many listens like i feel like i wouldn't love it as much so knowing yeah. that this is something that that i can just do for fun i think you know kind of keeps me comfort because i am having so much fun with it like i have I had a gig on Wednesday and it was a full band. I mean, I think that's the coolest part about like this taking this next step um, is, is working with the band and kind of like making my music more easy listening because it's, it, there's more things to listen to. I get to collaborate with people. Um, a friend mm -hmm. of mine, uh, he listens to albums at full length. So he'll start, start to finish and he'll listen to them as many times as there's a different instrument involved, which is silly a bit crazy but like um wow. but being able to listen and then hear a different parts so like getting my music to that point where like there's different instrumentation here there's different harmonies here and then to have to go back and like re-listen so you get to get you get to catch up all of it there's layers there's layers I, i'm i'm adding layers I'm like mm -hmm. an onion. <laughs> I get You're to like add layers now. An onion who can <laughs> add layers after, after that. No, that's more like cake then. Cakes. No, back to cakes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that. I hear that. I unfortunately I, made it a Shrek reference, but okay. I, I know. Trust me, I know. Um, <laughs> this is my attempt at being funny. I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> you are great. Don't worry. Um, uh, all you need to do is be yourself, don't you worry? Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 funny like that. I I have been, I'm so scared about like bringing in other instruments or or bandmates or anything. I am like super paranoid about like being in a band or starting a band. Like the furthest I've gone at this point is inviting some singers who I've met to sing on. Which friends. were amazing. I saw yeah, you play. You that did. was phenomenal. Like, it was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. That was so cool. She's great. I'm There's really glad I got to be there. I'm glad you were there. I did a, for those wondering, I did a show at Rockwood in uh, early July, Rockwood Music Hall. Um, Bree Short, who's an amazing singer and dancer who I hopefully will have on the pod at some point. She currently is in Sleep No More, which you go, you go see. Um, she, uh, she agreed to sing two songs with me or sing one of my songs for me and then sing with me on the second one. And she's fabulous. And, and that was like scary cause for me because uh, I'm so not used to performing with other people at this point. I've been going solo for so long and it's so scary to put like my work in someone else's hands or to even ask somebody hey will you help me express myself like it's a weird thing to ask of a person and um and i think maybe part of it is because the ep i made a few years ago like you know the guy i did it with he was he's a friend and he was great and i think we had slightly different visions of what the record what the ep was supposed to sound like and it sounded very different in the end than i kind of wanted it to uh and so i'm a little bit like hesitant to be like Hey, you're talented. Come on aboard. So, I'm I'm glad you still have that 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 you are enjoying that so much that it's it's bringing you so much happiness in your music. I love collaborating. Like I have, um, uh, well, Anne always sings harmonies yeah. with me. She's I've angry. handed her my song so many times, and she's created amazing harmonies for them. Um, mm -hmm. Our mutual friend Anne Preen, for those who yeah. don't know, um, and, and member of Anne Squared, who is Anne the Squared. official band. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as of recently, uh, my, my boyfriend, Sam Miller, he's been adding like electric guitar riffs to it, or he mm. plays keys and he, he just played drums for my set, um, on last past Wednesday. Oh, um, cool. and that's really fun. And then sometimes I'll get like, I, I shout out Frankie Matos. He played bass. He's an awesome, like guitarist and yeah. he, he'll, he'll add stuff or like my friend, Mike Pullmatter, he'll play stuff on bass too. And then like, I always get like a mandolin player, like John Risotto to come by and he'll add things too. So I mean, I love the, the, the collaborating process just cause I know there's some people that listen to music and they hear that stuff all the time. And I don't ha mm -hmm. I haven't like my ear isn't yet tuned to that, but I, I totally get where you're coming from with having to trust somebody with that, with your music. I yeah. think that's definitely, uh, that's a big step if it didn't necessarily work out the first time how you hoped it would. 
<laughs> the first um, time and the only time. But I think it's something to definitely take another look at. It is. You yeah. did. You did try yeah. it at Rockwood, mm -hmm. and it worked out beautifully. And we're going to keep trying. we got to keep trying. We're going to. Now I'm now <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about this this much on the podcast I swear but now I'm dating like a serious background singer and it's like eventually I'm gonna have to just muster up the courage to be like help <laughs> like you're good at this like help but I think that's, that's the beauty of dating yeah. a musician though because like yeah. I said like my boyfriend he yeah. percussion and keys and guitar and like sings yeah. and just I I think the coolest part is when I get to sing with him like and mm -hmm. having that that person to kind of give you that opinion on the song that you were in 110 percent about like someone you can tr you really can trust that they're not gonna like judge you like they're there to help yeah it's like yeah the girl that you're dating like yeah. then she's i'm sure she'd love to help i'm and sure she i know would your too. music like those yeah. those are really fun songs to sing along to yeah uh, hopefully we'll see what happens we got we're, we both got a lot going on in uh, yeah. <laughs> All good things. All good things. All good things. I was, like, um, really nervous. I was like, wait, we gotta talk about, like, fears and failures. Thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. Follow Anne on Instagram at AOR Music Official and listen to her self-titled EP on Spotify now. More info at AnnaRourke.com. If you enjoyed the show, tell a friend. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps word about the show spread like those annoying flyers when you try and promote your own shows. Yep. And, of course, make sure you're subscribed to easily download new episodes. I'm Trying is hosted, edited, produced, and scored by Janelle Dennis and me, Jacob Derwin. Our cover art was created by the fabulous Sammy Kappa. See more of her work at SammyKappa.com. That's S-A-M-I-C-A-P-P-A.com. And you can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at I'm Trying Show. And if you want, you can follow us individually at Janelle Dennis and Jacob Derwin. If you've screwed up or embarrassed yourself and are looking for help or pity, reach out to us on Twitter or email at I'm Trying Show at gmail.com. And our team of crisis experts it's us. will be more than happy to assist you. Reasonably happy. Thank you so much for listening. And in the words of Bob Marley and the Whalers, one, one good, good thing about, about music. music when, when it, it hits, hits, you feel, feel no pain. pain. I feel a jump there. That's, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs>